Hello, welcome to Twisty Puzzle Math. This is video five. So I want to talk about commutators and commutivity. So the cube group is non-commutative, all right? F R does not equal R F on the cube. You can check this. So this means the group is non-commutative. It matters what order you you do things. Um, if you like fancy words, it's um, the math word is non-abelian, named after um, Abel, um, who was a mathematician in, involved with the um, early development of algebra. So it's a non-abelian group, it's a non-commutative group. And what a commutator is, is sort of a measure of, of how non-commutative it is. Um, anyone who's done quantum mechanics will recognize uh, the word commutator. Um, though this is, a, is it's the same idea, but um, on a group instead of a ring. So there's some notation. You have brackets, and you have, um, let's not do anything specific actually. Let's let P and Q be moves you can do. Then the commutator of P and Q is bracket P comma Q close bracket. And what that means is do P, then do Q, then do inverse P, then do inverse Q. Now, if this was a commutative group, you could just rearrange the order. And P and P inverse would cancel and Q and Q inverse would cancel. And this would give you the identity. But it does not because the order matters. However, these are usually close, in some sense, some ambiguous sense, to the identity, meaning they, they don't mess with too much. And they're usually a good place to start for finding moves on the cube. So there are a couple um, rather I don't know, famous examples. Um, one is the Z commutator. So if you do F, R, or any two adjacent sides, this is F, R, F inverse, R inverse. And we've done this one um, already, or oh, I thought about doing it. Nope, no, we did it in the third video where we introduced cycle notation. We did this move, it's the Z commutator, and we wrote out its cycle notation. It gave us a pair of corner swaps and a three cycle on the edges. Um, there's another um, commutator, and this would be um, F inverse commutator R. So you do F inverse, then do R. Now the inverse of an inverse is just the move, so F, then R inverse. Let me show you what that one looks like. So F inverse R, F, R. Now, uh, sometimes it's F, R inverse, it doesn't really matter. If you look at the, the pieces that were affected, um, it looks like a Y, um, especially if, uh, let, me, let me think about this for um, a second, who I did, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, if I, if I did instead, if I did F, um, R inverse, then it does look like a Y, uh, upright Y. In any case, it, it, it's a little bit different than a Z commutator. But it does um, uh, pretty much uh, the same thing. You notice, let's do its cycle notation just for, for fun. Um, if I do up, left, front, that's white, blue, orange. White, blue, orange is uh, over here. So that's up, back, right. And um, they've swapped. That's closed. Now, right here, I've got a white, orange, green. So these two have switched. So that would be up, front, right, down, front, right. They've switched. And then as again, there's a three cycle on the edges. So um, if I do up, front, white, orange, uh, up, front goes to up, right, which goes to front, right, which goes back to up, front. So it has a similar um, cycle structure as a Z commutator, and this is the Y commutator. 
So if I if I do this uh, again, you, you know the corners are going to be in their original location, but you know twisted. So if I do F R inverse F inverse R, whoops, that's not what I intended. <laughs> so uh, F R F, right there's that one. So F R F inverse R. Yeah, so the corners are now back where they belong, but they're twisted. Um, if I do the move again, the edges will be back where they belong. So F R inverse F inverse R. Edges are returned, and we have the um, swaps on the edges. Uh, sorry, on the corners. If I do this um, twice more, the corners will be back in their spots and twisted properly. F R inverse F inverse R, um, uh, F R inverse F inverse R. Yep, I'm clearly a liar. Um, F R inverse. Uh, I've went back to the identity. So I, I, I did it. Uh, oh, that makes sense. I did it six times, and we have two, and we have three, um, and these are twisted. So three times. Well, hmm. um, skip that thought for a moment. Come back to it. So um, these are interesting. In the book I had showed you in the first video um, by Sigmaster, Sigmaster and Frey, um, they claim, and it's fun to try, that you can solve the entire cube using only these two uh, moves. And I, I assume conjugates of them. I've not told you what a conjugate is, but we will in the next video. That these are enough to solve the cube. And it, there are certainly a number of uh, solutions I've um, um, figured out for the cube, which only require two moves. Um, so when you go and you, you, if you look up a solution to the Rubik's Cube, and, and most people do, there's no embarrassment to that, um, you find all kinds of uh, notation or directions for, for getting one part of the cube and another part of the cube, and there's a long list of things to remember. Um, but you can solve the cube, I can tell you, um, using only uh, commutators. Only two of them, in fact. And uh, that's all you need. And, and the rest of it you can figure out on your own. And um, I will have a video on that um, solution with an alert that's a spoiler. Uh, it's, it's not very fast, maybe very efficient, but it's um, it, it's easy to remember, and if you forget, it's easy to rediscover. This thing here, though, um, it's, it's a good place for starting. If you get a, a new puzzle, um, a Rubik's Cube mod, for example, I, I've made a few, I'll show them in a future video, where I've epoxied, uh, basically I've bandaged some of the cube together in various ways, and the usual solutions uh, for the Rubik's Cube no longer work. So you need to find uh, new algorithms or new processes to solve the, the resulting problems. Um, uh, or, or on other puzzles, um, other shapes, other geometries, um, you know, where do you start? Uh, how do you find a solution if you don't want to look it up? And commutators is a great place to start. Uh, another tool we're going to use, and this will be the subject of the next video, is um, the conjugate. Okay. So that's commutators.